Welcome everybody. Happy Sunday night. Sunday night in the AI Learning Lab. We're shaking what's going down. Got some lunar energy tonight. Wave functions. Hey Dr. J, what's happening? Okay, farmer, what's happening? Popcorn or nachos? All right, happy Sunday night. Cap and white. Well, shaking. I say cap and like that because of cap and crunch. <laughs> uh, Thelonious in the first 10. You're a rock star. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, user 72648362259. Oh, and <laughs> when when workshop. I this weekend this weekend was I painted the front well, sanded and painted the front porch, sanded and painted the back porch, stained part of the fence that I had that wasn't finished for like a year and a half. And then went to Costco on a Sunday. So my weekend was full of physical labor. Um, I'm going to get to it before the end of the end of the month. Although what we're, we're at the end of the month, aren't we? <laughs> I've got a, uh, I get, I'll get to it this week. I've got a, um, a speaking gig on Wednesday, speaking to a big pharma company about AI and why it's fantastic. Tobias is AWOL. He's actually in the hot tub. Oh, that's rough. You got to give him crap for that. Costco on a Sunday. Crazy man. I know, right? <laughs> All right. Coffee. Uh, peach. Peach seltzer. It's just, it's like, it's all boring lately. I just, I, it's, a, it, I just, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a uh, beverage rut, but it's fine. I like it. All right. Oh, holy crap. Got a lot of people in here. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Kyle Shannon. This is the AI Learning Lab. Uh, we talk about AI stuff in here. I try to answer as many questions as I can. I like to have fun. We we sing, we dance. We got a, a bunch of people that hang out in here called the Irregulars because they have issues, uh, <laughs> but they're awesome. Um, let me let me show you all something here. All right, this thing right here. So what I put up on the screen is if you're new to the world of AI, if you're like tired of hearing about it and everyone's like, oh, what's going on with the hair? Good Lord, sorry. I also talk a lot about the hair because it just, I don't know. I'm just not happy with it. What are you going to do? But I got some, so that's good. Um, if you're new to this AI stuff, I know it's annoying. I know it feels overhyped. And like the, the people that you know that are into it, you're like, oh, shut up about it already. And then the people that you know that are afraid of it, you're like, well, it's, I don't think it's going to kill us, right? Like, we're good, right? Here's what you should do. Just go there, chat.openai.com. That's the ChatGPT website. And just start playing. Listen, if you want, you can hang out and listen to me talk. If my voice bugs you, just <laughs> mute it. Just go there. And it's just a, it'll, you sign up for an account. And it's just a box. Just like a Google box. And you just type shit into it. If you don't know what to type into it, go to that document, prompts.chat. That's going to teach you how to talk to these things. They're, they're incredibly profound tools that are a little janky right now. They're janky because we're early. So uh, my background is I'm an entrepreneur. I've started 12 or 15 companies. I was an entrepreneur in the early days of the World Wide Web. So I started a company called Agency.com, which was one of the first digital agencies. And the early days of the web, very... This this AI stuff is very, very reminiscent of the early days of the web in, in many, many, many ways. The difference here is that this stuff is way more profound and it's moving way more quickly. So uh, as much as the World Wide Web changed everything, you know, from the 90s, you know, through, through today, this stuff's going to be even more pr profound. So go do that. Um, let me... All right, so for the rest of y'all, so if you haven't tried anything, go there. Go there now. Just do that. So the rest of y'all, if you played with ChatGPT, let me let me uh, share some other things. And feel free to screenshot this stuff. Um, 
Claude and Bing are the, these three, this little triumvirate are, are kind of the three of these chat GPT like things I use on a pretty regular basis. Claude, you can put really long prompts in and it's got long memory. So if you ever get frustrated at chat GPT that it forgets shit occasionally, Claude's much better. It's got a, it's got, um, I don't know, 10, 20. It's much, or it's, it's a lot. It's got a hundred thousand tokens. So 75,000 words you can put in a prompt for Claude. Bing is Microsoft's version of ChatGPT. Uh, it's based on GPT-4. It's connected to the internet. It can make images. It's pretty good. Okay. Some other ones to look around at. Uh, Bard is Google's entry into this space. Perplexity.ai is good for research. Labs.perplexity is they're hosting Meta's Llama 2 and Code Llama models. So that's cool. Pi is chatty GPT. If you want to talk to chat GPT, a chat GPT like thing, that's Pi. Um, not fun if you're trying to get shit done, but if you want to have a conversation, it's really, really good. And then Poe has got a bot maker and all sorts of cool shit. Okay. Now, what else? Images. You want to play with images? Screenshot this. Mid Journey's the big boy right now. I, I think they're going to be unseated in the next four months. But right now, they're the best. Um, yesterday, um, I added this one to the list. Ideogram or, or ideogram. I think it's ideogram. I don't know. Um, this is a large language, or this is a, a, a diffusion image generation model that does text really well. Like text within an image, like make a billboard with this particular word on it. It'll do that. Um, and in fact, that image was created by it, and so was that one, and so was that one, and so was that one. So it's pretty something. Now, it's brand spanking new. They do not have an API. Their Discord is still has that new car smell. Um, but that's, that's ideogram.ai. So if you haven't played with the stuff, that's a really good one to go to. Leonardo and ClipDrop are sitting on top of Stable Diffusion. Promptbook, this openart.ai thing, that'll teach you how to talk to these things. And then futurepedia.io, that's a big old pile of uh, l links to different AI applications. Okay, so so welcome in, everyone. If you have questions, comments, pop them in the, uh, in the comments below. I'll talk about them. There is a drag kind of a thing happening where we've got a scammer. Um... So this flaming asshole um, stole all my videos and <laughs> has a channel called that with two L's in front of the word learning and is um, getting people to subscribe and then reaching out to them and trying to sell them on uh, multi-level marketing crypto shit. So uh, <laughs> I'm upset. I have reported it. I've now pinned a video. I made a video this afternoon about this situation. I've pinned it to my account. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm being kind of shadow banned whenever I, whenever I launch a video lately, it, it goes very quickly to 200. And then after 200, it gets about 10 views an hour. I have a feeling that's because I've got a scammer account that's got similar content. And so something's up anyway, I've reported this a bunch. I don't, if you know anything, if you're someone trying to sell me shit about, you know, I can protect your account. I'm not interested. I don't give two shits about that. If you, if you know how to deal with this uh, without selling me some services, uh, just let me know. Uh, any, any help would be great. Okay, so that's that. Um, so let's jump in. Let me, let me see what folks have posted as we're, as we're hopping in here today. Happy Sunday night, everybody. Chaos Generation, you are not late. We just started. Just started. You're like the third comment in there. Um, okay, if I remember. I'm in the first 10. Unfortunately, I'm old enough to remember that. <laughs> Captain Crunch. Hey, Kyle, when workshop. I know, I know. I need some peanut butter, Captain Crunch. I know, it was good. And, and then, you know, Crunch Berries... You know, they jumped the shark when they did the full box of Crunch Berries. Because when you, when you ate Captain Crunch with Crunch Berries, <clears throat> I think what we all thought was, why don't they just sell a box of the Crunch Berries? 
But it was the it was the rareness of the crunch berries that made them special. When you got a whole box of crunch berries, it was too sweet even for me. <laughs> oh, good lordy, God, Lord, 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 you're trying to make gasoline. What's up, buddy? Hey, everyone. Wow, so many already. I know, but now we're down to fifty four again. Like it went to one ninety four and then just dropped back down. So I don't know what happened there. Oh, they probably saw me. That's what it was. Okay, 60 Minutes had a story on AI tonight. Scammers using it on old people. Yeah, well, I assume, is that like they're synthesizing like their daughter's voice? That's a, that's a shit show. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that piece, but I know that's that story was around like a month ago, so it seems like that's about the time 60 Minutes would cover it. Do you think people are treating ChatGPT like we did software back in the day? I don't quite know what you mean by that. Um, mm, 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 mm. I don't quite know what you mean. Where, where it's like this foreign thing and they don't know what to do with it? If it's that, definitely. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very much like the early days of the web where you had a really diverse set of um, enthusiasts. Hang on, let me flip my flip my cameras let me flip my cameras and let's get back to the pretty ai learning lab picture it's so pretty it's so pretty it looks just like a little lobby it's nice it's so nice oh we were talking about eddie murphy last night eddie why are you watching dickie in the thing <laughs> oh Oh, um, but, but, but yeah, so early days of, of the web, you had this group of really diverse enthusiasts who were like, oh, this web thing's really cool, and they were trying to tell everyone about it, and people were like, hey, what? What's the web? What are you talking about? You can click on things? What? <laughs> and then all of a sudden it got all hypey, and like in 97, 98, and 99, just everyone was like, you gotta be the web! You just, you got an idea? I'll give you $20 million. Like, everyone's on crack. <laughs> it's just stupid. And I feel like the AI stuff's a bit like that now, but it really hasn't, the AI stuff hasn't really hit, hit its frothy, its frothiness yet. As, as, as overhyped as it seems, it's, it's not nearly as crazy as, like, the like late 98 into 99. That, that was stupid. I think this is going to get stupid really quick, probably next year. Um, but yeah, I think people are trying to figure out how to use this stuff. And, and, you know, part of the problem is, and this is, this is similar to the early days of the web too, is like the enthusiasts, the enthusiasts could see past the limitations. Regular people can't, right? Same thing here. Like in this channel, I'm like, yeah, it's got limitations, but use it anyway. Like play with it anyway. Um, but people who are used to software that's functional look at this stuff and they're like, um, is it me or is this a steaming pile of shit? <laughs> um, but I don't know if that's what you're asking. So clarify that question and I'll do my best to answer. You should check out Bit and Sore. You said that last night. All right, I'll go look at it. If this is some multi-level marketing thing, <laughs> I'll be cranky. All right. Bit and Sore. The, the, you're probably the uh, you're probably the guy that scammed the site. Internet scale machine learning sounds interesting. It's a weird name. Build white paper. Academia wallet. Well, it's clearly new. They got a pretty picture. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Open source. Oh, it's a protocol. Powers a decentralized blockchain what? Decentralized blockchain. Oh, machine learning network. Oh, okay. I got it. Yeah, that that's a, that's a cool idea. I mean, it, it's <clears throat> this is a bit more... Um, infrastructure than I kind of deal with on this channel, but, but that's super cool. If it, the, when they put an application layer on top of this, um, it, like this kind of stuff sounds, sounds 
important. And especially with the open source large language models, they're going to need infrastructure like this. So that sounds kind of cool. It just at first glance, I don't know if it's real, but there's not there's not a ton. If you're a developer, that would probably be an interesting project to play with. If you're a business person, it feels a little early. It feels a little early. How's ChatGPT going, sir? Uh, it's going okay. <laughs> it's going okay. It's what... <sighs> My experience with these large language models has has pretty consistently been it's really easy to get them to get you to 80% of whatever you want. It's much harder to get you to 90 or 95% of what you want. And it's essentially impossible to get you to 100% of what you want. So, so... So what I've been trying to balance is which tool do I use? So the reason I've got these three plus these four is that they all have some, uh, they all have something <laughs> that I like, but there's not one of them that has everything. Um, and that's, that's, why, that's why I'm kind of playing with, with a bunch of them right now. And and what you have to balance is do I put <laughs> do I put three hours into getting the prompt just right so it generates what I want, or do I just say, fuck it, the prompt's good enough to get me to 80% and I'll take it over the finish line? I've been leaning more toward the latter. <laughs> so So it's going good, but it's but it's just, you know, really understanding that um that these things are it's it's early days. What just happened? Oh, Keynote. Keynote just decided it wanted to sync with some other version of that file. Hold, please. Because I changed something. Wait, what do I want to do? I want to do this one. Keep one. Okay. Is that right? Did I do good? Sort of. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Enough comedy jokes. Because I am a wild and crazy guy. Wow, TikTok not letting me screenshot. Are you, KC, are you on a um, Samsung? If you are, there seems to be a Samsung issue. I don't know if it's my channel explicitly, because some of the Samsungers said it was my channel and not other ones. So, uh, if you are on a Samsung... One one thing you can do is you back out of the lives, go go back to your timeline where this is still on the live, and you can screenshot then. So if you want to, if you want, I assume you want to screenshot these things. Um, hold. Well, yeah, you can just screenshot that. So pop out into your timeline so you can still see this. I think you can screenshot there. It's just not. It's when you're in the lives you can't. And then here's this one. And then here are the picture ones. I think everyone, everything's there. You'll need to zoom in on that. Midjourney, ideogram.ai, Leonardo, and clipdrop.co. Coo, coo, coo. All right. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. We still can't screenshot either. Is it all? It must be all. It's a security policy with Samsung. What's the security policy? It's your fucking phone. Why can't you screenshot something on your phone? That's the most bizarre thing I've ever heard. Weird evening. Lunastick, what's happening? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -da. Let's keep the turtle love alive because I like turtles. <laughs> Are you saying that turtles have no importance? Oh, turtles have all the importance. Um, TikTok jumped me to the bottom. Hang on a second. I'm going to jump up and try to catch up to where I was in the questions. By the way, if you're new here, um, I do like to try to answer all the questions. That leads to a situation. And the situation is I get really behind on questions. And then people that come in new, they're like, he's not answering my questions. When is he going to answer my questions? And that's exactly what they sound like. They all sound like that. Because they record videos saying that and send them to me. It's exactly what they sound like. 
<laughs> he didn't answer my question yet. <laughs> a lot of tantrums in here. The irregulars, they're not okay. They're irregular. So that happens. So just know that. Know that I will get to your question eventually unless I don't, in which case you can yell at me and shame me because shame is my love language. So you can get to me. You can do it good. But if you're an uncreative troll, I don't give two shits. Creative trolls, those I like. And what's that look like? You're like, but Kyle, what does a creative troll look like? Here's what a creative troll looks like. The first time you read the comment, you're like, oh, that's a nice compliment. And then you squint your eyes and look at it and you're like, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure I just got put down. That's a solid troll. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're, see, we're encouraging critical thinking and creativity here at the lab. Don't just, if you're going to be mean, just don't be lazy and mean. You got to be clever and mean. <laughs> I, my, one of my sons once, I cracked some joke and the other one laughed and then Zach laughed and then he, and then he stopped laughing and he looked at me and he went, dad, you're funny, but you're mean. <laughs> I thought that was a lovely compliment. <laughs> Sometimes the best comedy. Slightly on the edge. <laughs> All right, folks, folks. Did he, did he, did he, the only decentralized AI application neural network, SC Silver. I'll check it out. It's a little, it's a little more technical than I'm capable of really reviewing. Best white label chatbot creator. The only one that I really know, well, there's there's two. So Poe.com, um, you can build bots there and, and distribute them. Um, I don't know if you can monetize them. I don't know if you can, I, I don't, I, I haven't dug deep into what you can do with them or, or are you just building shit for, for, the, for them? I assume it's the latter. Um, the other thing that, that you can play with is Zapier, the automation tool, has a new thing in beta called interfaces. And one of the interfaces that they have is a chatbot template. So you can do all sorts of cool prompting off to, to OpenAI or whatever large language models they have services to, build that into a chatbot and, you know, host it, you know, host it with their interface. So you could build yourself a... Uh, you know, a little application that's a chatbot without having to do any coding or anything. They'll they'll do the hosting. I think you can even point a domain to it if you pay their their exorbitant fee. I just pay their shitty fee. <laughs> I I pay the what do I need to pay to get this thing to fucking work fee. That's like the minimum. <laughs> that's the one I pay. Because <laughs> the they they're like it, the fuck, fucking SaaS companies drive me crazy. It's it's like the oh. You wanted that to work? Yeah, that would be more. Oh, that pisses me off. Just give me a fucking price for the thing that works. <laughs> uh, have you seen Marketing Blocks 2.0? I looked at that last night, actually. Uh, it, look, it looked interesting. I, it, you know, it's in the neighborhood of Jasper and Copy AI. Um, it, it had a similar sort of marketing gate that really pissed me off, <laughs> which was, you know, sign up. And, and then we'll show you what it is. It's like, no, no. It's like, let me see what it is. And if it's good, then I'll sign up. Like, it's the, they've got the marketing, um, what do they call it? The marketing funnel. I think they got a, they have an inverted marketing funnel. And it, it, it pisses me off. So I'm sure it pisses other people off. So I think they would be well served being, a, being that they're a marketing company, not to have a shitty, um, a shitty marketing funnel. Ideogram is great. What's up, Kyle? Clint! Clint Copperhead. 10 out of 10 on a name, Clint Copperhead. Clint Copperhead. You don't fuck with Clint Copperhead. What's happening, ladies? Name's Clint. Clint Copperhead. Oh, my. <laughs> is it me? No, no. It's not you. Clint's dreamy. I like it. Solid. 
Captain Crunch always cut the roof of my mouth. Well, that's part of the experience. The the shards the shards of sugar crystals slamming into the roof of your mouth and making it bleed. That's part of the, that's why Captain Crunch tastes so good because it mixes the salt of your blood with the sugar of the Captain Crunch. That's that's part of the experience. I tasted blood throughout breakfast. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> this is why. This is why Gen Xers are stronger. <laughs> We we built character <laughs> with jarts. <laughs> oh my god. How did we survive? <laughs> who who else who else had this as a seatbelt? <laughs> my mom would be driving. <laughs> and like she'd go to turn quick or like someone would come at me and she would put her put her arm across my chest to hold me back. That was my seatbelt. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> my, my mom opportunistically deciding she could hold back the inertia <laughs> of a kid flying through the windshield. <laughs> oh, those were the days. <laughs> oh, you are so awesome. Thank you, Zach Zero Pippins. <laughs> That's I appreciate the the awesome compliment. That's very nice. <clears throat> ah, you have a T-shirt story to tell today. Did I miss it? I don't. I don't know that it's a story to tell. It's just a lovely. My wife found whoever this T-shirt vendor is and gets it for my boys and me, and they're like nice. They're nice and thin. They have nice graphics on them. There are too many Ask AI websites. Which one you talk? Wait, there are too many Ask AI websites. Which one? You, oh, which one do I use? So that's why I have these things on screen. Um, and I assume you mean Ask AI. You just mean like Chat GPT kind of things. The the best one in my opinion, like until further notice, is Chat GPT. Now, in in my opinion, I'm not affiliated with them, so if you don't do this, I don't give a shit. GPT-4, the chat GPT-4 is significantly better than chat GPT-3.5, but chat GPT-3.5 is free and it's super fast. So if you don't have money, just use chat GPT-3.5. It's really good. The other one that's free is Claude. This one right below it, Claude.ai. That one also has a super large context window is what it's called. Basically, you can just put in really large prompts. What's that mean? What's a prompt? The prompt is the shit you put in there to ask it shit. It's got a big enough context window that you could upload or copy and paste a 50,000 word novel into that and tell it to write you the prologue or the epilogue to your novel. And it'll just do it. Or you could put in really long terms of service for a website and say, hey, what am I agreeing to here? You know how we don't read terms of service because we're not lawyers? You can now pop terms of service in these tools and just say, read these for me and tell me what are the things that are egregious in here? Or what are the things that I'm agreeing to? Um, so I think those two are kind of the, kind of the, the two I'd play with. Um, Bing is also GPT-4. It's a little bit hobbled. It's not as good as that one, but it's free. So Bing, the reason I have these three here is these three are where I'd start. If, if you don't want, if you're like, just give me one. That's the bold one. That's the one on the top. And then go read prompts.chat. That will teach you how to use that and, and the other ones. But, but like, that's like a little primer that says, here's what these things are, here's how they work, here's how you talk to them, here's what they do. Here's a big link, long list of prompts that you can try and see how fucking remarkable these things are. <clears throat> and just go, just go play. Just go play, that's the one. And then, but Bing can do, Bing's connected to the internet and Bing can make pictures and read pictures and you know, there's all sorts of happy horse shit you can do with these things. But ChatGPT is the way to start. It's the place. It's the place to be. It's the place to start. I'm not a crook. Hey, live from the hot tub. Tobias coming in, soaking. Nice, nice. Yeah, the missus was like, 
Tobias is MIA. Actually, he's in the hot tub. She outed you. That's fantastic. <laughs> What's today's date? It is Sunday the 27th. How is it the end of fucking August already? Really? Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Time doesn't work anymore. Do you remember when time used to work? It all broke. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. It's cold and I don't know what time it is exactly. <laughs> Can you ask the AI what the formula for the zombie virus is? I don't know what the zombie... Oh, the, the formula for the zombie virus. Yes, you can, in fact. You could tell it to be a a uh, a fictitious, uh, uh, you know, uh, infectious disease doctor and, and have it tell you that, and it will. And it'll probably be based on some version of science. Bill Gates on Letterman was clueless about the internet. Yeah, so Zach Zero Pippins, which good name, by the way, <clears throat> 9 out of 10, um... Microsoft was clueless until they weren't. So Microsoft were like, the internet's bad, the internet's evil, and we're sitting there going, well, you're a fucking moron, dude. Uh, Microsoft was sort of willfully ignorant of the internet for a lot of years. And then when it became clear to them they had to move, they fucking did it like that. It was impressive. And it it's really what they've what they've done with OpenAI and ChatGPT is reminiscent of when they moved, made the move into the internet. But with ChatGPT, they're in the lead, right? Back in whenever it was they they jumped, it was like ninety seven or ninety eight. Whenever it was that Microsoft said, "Okay, we're all in on the internet," it was like it was like three years into the stuff the stuff we were all doing and and it it was weird that they were ignoring it but you know to to be quite honest <clears throat> the internet just like chat gpt is an existential threat to google's search business or you know these large language models and that's why google mothballed them the internet was an existential threat to microsoft's shrink-wrapped software business so they resisted it because you don't want to flush the cash cow down the toilet. But when it became clear to them that, A, they could, they, they, they could do this, they could figure out how to do this, and B, everything was going this way, they said, fuck it, we're in. So in the 90s, they were reactive. In 2023, they're proactive. Actually, 2022. They said, this thing looks real. We're going all in. This looks like it could be an existential threat to Google, which seems pretty fucking good to us. <laughs> and the CEO has been pretty giddy about the fact that he's really digging fucking with Google. Um, so, yeah, so they're really they're in an interesting place right now. Uh, -pa 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 -pa. Brian Gumble, Katie Kirk, recluse about the internet. What is that at thing? This is the best. This is the best little. Uh, <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Katie Kirk, internet, internet, nineteen ninety four. I I remember this. I saw this live. I was living in New York at the time. Back to 56 pass, I wasn't prepared to translate that as I was doing that little tease. Oh, that's that right. little mark with the A and then the ring around it. At? See, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Katie said she thought it was about. Yeah. Oh. But I'd never heard or it. Around. I'd never heard it about. said. About. I'd always about. seen the mark, but never yeah. heard it said. <laughs> and then it sounded stupid when I said it. Violence at NBC. <coughs> yeah, I heard the around or about the lunchroom. <laughs> See, there it is. Violence at NBC, GE com. I mean. <laughs> Well, Allison should know. What, what do you is say internet that anyway? What is internet anyway? Internet is uh, that <laughs> massive computer network. Oh my god, that was so funny when that aired. Oh, we 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 were rolling on that one. That was one of the, that that was turned into a video very very quickly. <laughs> uh, that's good. Oh wait, you know, while we're here. 
Village with my friend the zombie Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. <laughs> All right, you're great zombie. All right, you're a great zombie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Winston, for the lovely heart. Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's comedy. Comedy. Nancy, good evening. Uh, what is this bitten store? I, it's it's someone trying to get me to uh, uh, pay attention to it. It's it's just it's 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 not in my wheelhouse of what I mean. I'd be happy to look at it, but I don't I don't think I'm the right person to review it. Cause a I don't really do reviews, and I think it's it's a little early. Like it's a little. It needs developers to go build shit on it right now. Right now, it's just it's just a protocol that no one's heard of. So, uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. way back when I learned on Apple, on Apple One and two computers later, later Windows ninety five. Yeah, yeah. My first Mac was a a Mac five twelve KE. It was the second Macintosh. It still had the signatures inside the case. It was pretty cool. Um, Ted looks at life. Hey, Kyle was shaken. What is he talking about right now? A bit in store. Yeah, I know. It's just, he's just trying to, he's trying to get people to pay attention to the thing. Uh, it looks interesting, but it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit more technical than, than what we do in here. Uh, hey folks, let's keep the turtle love alive because I like turtles. <laughs> Uh, Luna Shtick, good evening. It says security policy Samsung. Oh, TikTok just jumped me to the frip, frippin' bottom. Here's an interesting thing about, you know, we were talking about the early days about, of the internet. Um, I talked a little bit to, about this last night. Paul Reitzer's uh, podcast from last week talked about this, and I thought it was fascinating. The World Wide Web, it took six years to sort of ramp up. It, it took six years to get from, you know, starting and people starting to play with it to 100 million users. ChatGPT took six weeks. One of the big differences between then and now, uh, there's, a, there's a bunch, you know, one of them is the tool itself was much more simple. The, the World Wide Web was really just hyperlinks, right? It was, I can link from this document to that document. It was a very, very simple protocol. This AI stuff is much more sophisticated. In 1994, we still had dial-up modems, and, you know, the Today Show didn't know what the internet was. What is internet anyway? So it took a lot of years for the infrastructure of, you know, awareness of the internet and awareness that there was this thing called the World Wide Web, and it was simple, and it was fun, and it was interesting, and it was a bit of chicken and an egg. It's like, well, you can't really roll out access to all of the people, if all of the people, if there's nothing them, if there's nothing there for them to go look at, right? So, but you have to put stuff there and that costs money. So you need people there, right? So there was this chicken and egg thing about, about the internet. So it took a lot of years to get there. This AI stuff, you know, it got to a hundred million users in six weeks because all of the infrastructure is in place, right? We've spent the last 35 years getting all this shit in place and you know broadband and cloud-based gpus and just all of the infrastructure is there and so you know scientists and researchers can do the the science side of it and developers can do the application layer and business users can use those applications just instantly like that so if something comes out that's good like this image generation tool that does text now all of a sudden, you know, that opens a whole new world for a whole new group of people that they don't have to invent shit. They just go to that site and ask for stuff they want and bang, there it is. So that idea that this thing is it is going to get real faster is largely because of there's there's nothing to really build. We've built it all. What what there is to build is is just the app, the apps that resonate with people and, you know, 
ChatGPT was kind of the first of those. Comedy is edgy, politically incorrect. We don't have to be mean. We don't have to be mean. Because remember, wherever you go, there you are. You know, life's pretty tough. But it's tougher if you're stupid. All right. Um, I'll tell you, cowpoke. Bah, bah, bah. I forget John Wayne. I got I to gotta go back and listen to some shit. I'm not doing a good John Wayne. All right. If you want to work... Wait, if you want to work like you expected to... Yeah, if you want it to work like like expected, that would be extra. We used to joke at agency.com, Oh, I'm sorry, you wanted that to work? That would be more. <laughs> All right, how much do you pay Xfinity to work, Kyle? Um, way too much. Way too much. Scandalous. Captain Crunch cuts are a staple. They are. Ooh, mommy breakfast. Ooh. <laughs> uh, life cereal, too. Yeah, life. Uh, Twix. Remember Twix? Twix, Trix. Um, what were other... I was a, I was a big uh, Golden Grams fan. Like I like me some Golden Grams. Uh, and your girlfriend uh, hits the back of the seat and puts her face on it. That's funny. Captain Crunch was our cereal. Roof of our mouths bleeding. Black box ha hacker superhero powers. <laughs> Great idea. Terms of service, service summarizer. Appliance manual summarizer. Yeah, exactly. Um, one of the guys in the AI salon uh, uh, is um, he created a thing uh, that acted as a building maintenance guy. And so he could ask it questions like a like a like HVAC questions or plumbing questions or electrical questions. And and I was actually getting ready to do a presentation and their technology was fucking up and we, we used one of his bots that he created and it actually solved the problem for us. It was pretty cool. Um all kinds of happy horse shit. <laughs> that's that's my thing. I said that. That's one of the things I say. I just say things. Sometimes things just come out of my mouth. They just come out of my mouth. They're just like crazy. <laughs> All right. Ikea assembly required summarize. I'm um, probably not. Ikea with the little wrench, like you turn it in and it slips. You get quack. Because everything, everything in Ikea is a sharp, bloody edge. <laughs> so so when that little thing slips, you just you just have bloody knuckles. Yeah, Ikea's rough. How far, how far behind are we tonight? Right now, when when I read Sam Corn, you said how far behind are we? It's now eight fifty six. So I don't know when you ask that, um, but there's thirty two messages below this, so pretty far, pretty far already. Tonight, today, I wrote a paper and used ChatGPT, ran it on zero DPT, no AI detection, ran it on. Um, Sadly, probably too far behind for me to wait around to catch up since I can't stay long. Oh, no, Sam, don't go. Sam, don't go. Don't do it. Don't leave us, Sam. Sam's actually really bright. Sam has taught me a lot in, the, in, the, uh, in some of the previous lives. So if you're still here, Sam, thanks. I like your brain. I like curious people. I like people that are curious. They ask a lot of questions. They're like, hmm, how does this shit work? Oh, look how that works. And then they're generous and share that. And if, if you like that kind of thing, I started a community called the AI Salon. So if you're interested in joining a community of like-minded, crazy people that are like, this AI stuff's amazing. I got to do something with this. What the hell is this? Is this going to take my job? Are the robots going to kill us? Why am I scared? I'm excited. Are you excited? Those kind of people are all here. <laughs> so go to the salon.ai um, we do meetups every other week and, um, we have a discord server. Where we hang out, you can do mid journey images, ask questions, do stuff like that. So Claude AI better than government cheese. That's funny. Um, originally got flagged. Originality got flagged. Kyle Shannon. I don't know if I watch you for the entertainment value or the value. <laughs> <laughs> Come for the AI. Stay for the stupid. <laughs> oh, I'm. I gotta tell you, people. I'm a little tuckered tonight. I did. I did fence painting, 
It, you, you know the the Huckleberry Finn thing, like you know, get someone else to do your fence painting for you. I know why they he did that. It sucks. <sighs> painting seems so easy when you watch someone else do it, but when you do it, oh, it's just miserable. It's miserable. It's not good. Use Claude wasn't flagged. Sam Corn, you're not behind. Ha ha, 20 minutes isn't that far by Kyle's standards. That's true. So so at some point, I don't know if you can do this. Um, Thelonious was thinking um, that, or was it Retropunk? I think it was Thelonious, was thinking that if I had mods, mods could probably figure out the relevant questions and pin those so I could see them, but I could be looking at the comments below. I don't know if that's possible. So if anyone knows anything about modding TikTok, let me know. Uh, and, and maybe we can do better question management. I mean, I could probably do better question management by just, you know, not trying to answer all the questions and just, you know, deal with whatever's happening in real time. But I kind of like it. I kind of like being able to take 10 or 15 minutes on a question and really dig into it. You know? You know what I'm saying? You can't see me. Nobody can see me. I'm hiding. All right. Oh, you know what that looked like? <laughs> ADD moment. <laughs> that looked like the pile of mashed potatoes in Close Encounters of the Third Kind where Richard Dreyfus he plops the potatoes down and he goes, huh, <laughs> and he makes the little plateau with the mountain. It kind of looked like this. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right. Yeah, th this is how my brain works. Deal with it. All right. Steve Ballmer said that we will be the first to profit but last to be cool. Satya Nadella, cool second. Satya Nadella is a badass man. He was, he's like, when when he was talking, someone asked him about, well, you know, how are you going to monetize ChatGPT? Apparently, it's very expensive to run the instances of the, uh, yeah, Mr. Nadella, uh, the 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 uh, profitability uh, expectations of ChatGPT, or ask one of those fucking questions, and Satya was like. I'm willing to eat money and lose money if I can take a, like a half a point from Google's market share. <laughs> he was like giddy. He was like, they're upset. I'm digging this. He's fucking with them. <clears throat> it's good. And then shortly after that, um, Chad GPT threatened a New York Times reporter and it kind of put a kibosh on the party. <laughs> but it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> Oh, good lordy, lordy, lordy. <laughs> Corporate intrigue. Um, it's a series of tubes. Oh, yeah, they did say that, Chaos Generation. It's a series of tubes. It's the information superhighway. There was like a two-year period where it was like, it's like a highway, but it's like a superhighway with informational. It's a superhighway. It's, it's like a series of tubes that connect. What is internet anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it was crazy it was so much fun you know it it, it, it was so much fun because nobody knew anything and i i kind of feel like that's kind of where we are with generative ai where like the research scientists kind of know what these things do and where they're headed but Turning them loose on the unwashed masses, like nobody knows how they're going to be used and nobody knows where the real killer apps are yet, right? Like we don't know any of that. Like we're sort of like, well, it can write social media stuff and it can write code and we're, we're like, we're like sort of dancing around the edges of killer apps, but like no one sort of hit a thing that's like, holy fuck, this flushes this entire industry down the toilet. Like that hasn't happened yet, but like you can see it coming. It's like there's like piece parts of it. It's like it's like the lava's bubbling. It's like bloop, and you're like, oh shit! I wouldn't want to be a copywriter. Bloop! Oh shit! Look at the pictures. Bloop! Oh no! There's video. Bloop! There's the words. It's just, but but the you know the the sort of big eruption hasn't happened yet. So that's going to be fascinating when when the first thing that just sort of, you know changes an industry changes a kind of work that hasn't happened yet and i you know that's coming soon soon in the news don't kiss turtles 
Mm, play the Bill Gates video on David Letterman at the internet. I don't remember that one. Let's see. Bill Gates Letterman internet. That was right up there. You know, uh, Bill, there's something uh, that I really love about the Windows. Uh, the flying toasters. Look. See? They're toasters and they're flying. And then, oh, here comes the Brandon! It got looking. It got a little. Let me show you something. Yeah, okay. Here, okay. Huh? Wow. It would be cool. It, 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 make that fly. Let me see that thing fly. <laughs> wow. What did you think of that quiz machine? Very impressive piece of equipment until it exploded, wasn't it? I've seen better. Now. <laughs> Now, at Microsoft, I have a feeling that you guys must have a vast research and development department. New ideas come across your desk every minute of every day, don't they, pretty much? Almost. Yeah. So now, if something like the quiz machine failed, what would you do? What course of action would you take? Um, I'd recall it. Recall it? <laughs> but wouldn't you fire a lot of people first? No. No! <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, I have, like, a million things to ask you. First of all, if you can... Describe for us, succinctly, what it is that you did better and first that put you where you are today. What was the core... This in the internet. But, but you know, I think about... <clears throat> we, need, we need to find a, an application for you. Part of your problem is you have too many assistants. Uh -huh. Yeah, but you know... Uh, uh... There's, there's a difference. There is a difference. It's not a huge difference. I don't know. I can't find it. I don't know. We'll get, we'll get back to Letterman. I'll find that at some point. I don't know what he said there. But yeah, he was they were clueless about it for a while. <clears throat> he was a bit of a, a schlub. A little schlubber. <laughs> uh, 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 Sam. I should go, sadly. Night, friends. And Kyle, when you finally read this stream, <laughs> hope the stream goes well. Night, Sam. If you left already, bye. Um, I still have a Commodore 64. Very cool. Do, 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 do. My my lust machine back in the when I was a kid was a Timex Sinclair. It was like a little membrane keyboard <laughs> computer. I never ended up getting one. <laughs> Sorry, trying to catch up to where I was. Oh, there Sam was leaving. Commodore 64, me and my Winston, we got a real good thing. The frippin' bottom, exactly. Steve-O, Kyle, how do you find time to run a business? Give us three hours of your time and do homework on AI. Uh, <laughs> so, <clears throat> here's my thing. One of my pet peeves is when anyone says, I don't have time. Because when you say you don't have time... It, everyone's got time. It's what do you, what do you commit to? So when I fucking lose my mind on something, like when I lost my mind on, so, so when I first moved to New York, I was like, okay, I got to get an agent. I moved there to be an actor, right? Got to get an agent. And then it's impossible to get an agent unless you have a job and you can't get a job unless you have an agent. And so it's like this vicious circle and you're like, well, wait, what the, how the, how the fuck, what are you supposed to fucking do? So I started a theater, co theater company with a bunch of people and it was just like fucking 24 seven. It was like all we thought about, all we did, did that for four and a half years. Then I was like, well, I got an idea for a screenplay. And my buddy Brian said, <clears throat> well, I got an idea for a screenplay. Why don't we start with yours and then we'll do mine. And so, in like four months, we wrote two screenplays. And in two years, we wrote seven. And so it, it's basically, I just, I sort of choose to replace, like when I get home from work, what I used to do was I'd eat dinner, I'd watch TV for a while, I'd come do some sim racing, then I'd go back and watch TV, then I'd go to bed. And so when I got into this AI stuff, I was just like, okay, well, I need, like, this stuff is so vast and changing so fast, it's literally impossible to keep up with it. So I thought, I thought, well, I'm just going to start a bunch of shit. So I started, like, five things. I started a newsletter, the AI salon, this channel, um, all the stuff I'm doing at work, 
And there was one other thing that I started. I forget what it was. I don't know. There's like five things. And I started them all within a month. <laughs> and then I basically just said, okay, anything that I'm doing that's just fucking around, sim racing, watching TV, anything like that, that's gone. And so, the, so, so when I was writing all those screenplays over two years, I would go do my day job. I'd come home, have dinner um, with the missus. Brian, my screenwriting partner, would come down. He was living on the Upper East Side. I was living down in Soho. He he would show up at like 6 o'clock. <clears throat> and every night we'd write from <clears throat> 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., five nights a week. We'd write all day Saturday. And then we would mostly take Sunday off, but we'd occasionally write all day Sunday. And we did that for two years. And so it's just it's just one of those things like like, you know, <laughs> where do you have any time where you're fucking around? And then just, if you're committed to this shit, then just flush that time down the toilet and just do this. So, I don't know. That's, it's just a, it's a, uh, I think it's an ADD hyper-focus thing. Like, when I really get into something that really is challenging, like, this shit's really challenging. And it's it's not even just challenging because it's technically kind of uh, challenging right now. It's conceptually challenging, like like what ChatGPT is and what it can be and what code interpreter is and what are the implications of these images. Like all of this stuff is just like I, I just find it all consuming. I can't think about anything else. So so I just put, you know, any free time I have into it. So but thank you. I think that's a compliment. Um my first personal PC was a Timex Sinclair 1000, and you built it yourself. Clint, that was my dream computer. Damn it. AI is a very convincing liar. Yeah, Walls, walls Cloud. I like to call <laughs> ChatGPT uh, mansplaining as a service. Because, <laughs> yeah, it'll just lie to your face confidently, like a good man in your life. <laughs> I know nothing about this. Let me tell you about it. Well, Sally, I think what you meant to say. <laughs> um, do you ever see Apple Hypercard before Gofi Jughead Veronica? Huh? I, I remember when Hypercard came out. I was like, what is this Hypercard thing? I'm guessing that's the case, lol. Um, early on a lot of sites were library sites. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, Provite, so the early days, so here's, here's, Couple of the big parallels, early days of the internet, early days of this AI shit. When when I first started playing with the internet, it was all command lines and it was mostly like you would log into university computers, you would dial up <laughs> with command line, you know, things, and you'd go to Gopher and FTP sites and you'd download files from FTP sites and you'd gopher into libraries and you're like, oh, there's all this information in there. It felt it was weird. It was like, it was like, am I hacking or are we, you know, <laughs> somewhere between hacking and finding freely available information was the internet. And then the World Wide Web came along and it, it, it didn't require all of this. It just required this, right? Hyperlink, hyperlink, hyperlink. And that was the difference. And, and GPT 3.5 and machine learning and TensorFlow and all that shit with machine learning required a lot of command line and you needed to know Python and you needed to know this and you needed to know what weights were and what embedding was and what vector databases were like all that shit you had to know. And then chat GPT came along and it was sort of the, you know, the large language model equivalent of this, right? It, it was like the Google search box, say something or, you know, ask something. Uh, do you know how to code? Yes. Oh, write me a Python application. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, the, the, early, the early internet was just, yeah. And BBSs, dial-up BBSs. I was, I was on a dial-up BBS in New York City called Echo. <laughs> that's the, that's the, the phallic nose. <laughs> it's like, oh it's, get, oh, it's getting very spicy in here. Woo! <laughs> His trunk was very impressive. Ba, ba, ba. What podcast are you talking about? I think I was talking about Paul Reitzer's uh, Marketing AI Institute podcast, which is a really good 
So he's been doing that podcast for five years. Five. ChatGPT came out in November. <laughs> he was doing that podcast back at like GPT-2. Or GPT-1. He saw that. He saw this stuff coming way earlier than anyone else. Um, really smart guy. I like him a lot. He spoke at the AI salon. Um, <clears throat> and uh, he knows his shit. He really knows his shit. And that, that weekly podcast is very much worth a listen. The other guy that I think is worth a listen, if you're a little bit geekier, um, is, is a guy named David Shapiro on YouTube. And he's, he's very, he's basically trying to build an open source AGI system. So AGI stands for artificial general intelligence. Basically when these AI things get smarter than humans, that's what open AI is trying to do. That's what Anthropic, well, Anthropic's trying to do safety for AGI. Um, open AI is trying to do it. Google claims they're trying to do it. I don't know if, if they are or not. Um, but David Shapiro is a really smart dude. Um, what would be good to use in assisting in writing a book? ChatGPT or something else? ChatGPT. Um, if <clears throat> or or Claude. So, so I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a couple of things. GPT-4 at openai.com. So, so if you pay the 20 bucks there, you get access to chat GPT-4. It's better than any of the other large language models by a lot. And when it comes to writing and nuance and just, just good writing, GPT-4 is better than the other shit. Um, it's also better at coding if you want to do coding shit. Claude is is kind of in the in the neighborhood of GPT 3.5 in terms of writing quality, but Claude's got a 75,000 word memory for lack of a better term. So with Claude, you could say, hey, I've got an idea for a book. I want you to help me write an outline. You know, can you tell me some story frameworks? Okay, there's Save the Cat and there's this Sid Field thing and there's Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey. Oh, I want... This is going to be a hero's journey kind of story. Okay, great, right? Then you have it write an outline. Then you say, okay, um, here's a chapter of another book that I wrote. So I want you to write the first chapter of, you know, the the you know the outline that you just wrote. But I want you to follow the tone of the chapter I just wrote. You can just be pasting all this shit in, and Claude's got a long enough memory that it'll, it'll remember a lot of that. So you could say, write an outline, write chapter one. Based on the outline in chapter one, write chapter two. No, that's not good. You know, write, write, a, write a set of character breakdowns. And then, you know, now rewrite chapter one based on those character breakdowns. Now rewrite it as a comedy. Now rewrite it as a m m murder mystery novel. Now rewrite it as a Western. You can just dick around with it. So, but, but in terms of writing quality, GPT-4 is the best. In terms of the ability to do longer form conversations, Claude is a very useful tool. So I'd say bouncing back and forth between those two is probably the way to go. Oh, and then Cyber Zero G, um, I like the name, uh, 8.5 out of 10. Um, go explore, just you can go Google it, go Google a project called GPT Author. And if you know how to get a Google Colab notebook up and running, you're going to need to do that to make it run. If you don't, you can have ChatGPT teach you how to do that. Or go watch a YouTube video. Um, GPT Author, you 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 have to get it up and running in in Google Colab. You give it your OpenAI API key and your Stable Diffusion API key, and then it asks you for what's the what's the topic of the book that you want to write, and then what's the genre basically. You know what what category of book. And then you push the button 
And it just goes through this sequence. It starts out, it says, you know, oh, and you tell it how many chapters you want. So it, it defaults to 20, but you can say, I want a 12 chapter book or a 20 chapter book. And then it writes an outline of that many chapters for that story in that genre. And then it writes chapter one. And then based on the outline, then it writes chapter two. And it, you can just watch it. it. You're not watching it actually write. You're watching these system updates. It was like, it was like generating outline. Outline generated. It cost this many, you know, it was this many tokens and cost this much money. Uh, now generating chapter one, you know, done. It cost this much money. It was this many tokens, cost this much money. And then it basically just keeps adding. It's like it, it's like outline plus chapter one, then it does chapter two, then it takes those, then it writes chapter three, then it takes those. So the cost of the book keeps going up as it as it's stacking these chapters on top of each other. And then when it gets done writing the book, it writes a prompt for stable diffusion, generates cover art for the book, and saves it into ebook format. <laughs> and I mean, honestly, I did two of them. I, I did two of them. They weren't horrible. Like they, they, they're at least well structured. Like they're at least well structured. You know, are they a little trite and a little yeah, yeah? But imagine that tool, WESN Radio, hard rock, hip hop, welcome. Um, imagine that tool a year from now. When it gets more and more sophisticated. Like right now, it's just super raw. It's super raw. <laughs> super raw. Like it's... But but it it's not just spewing words. Like it's constructing a book based on an outline, right? It's doing what writers do. <clears throat> so, so it's got coherence, you know, <laughs> throughout the story. So that stuff's going to get way more sophisticated. I'm like, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I I mean, seriously, the like the 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 one thing that is is a truism in my life now that I can't it's never been a reality in my life ever is writer's block or or more accurately <laughs> Neurotic fear of self-expression has, has effectively been erased for me. Because historically, if I wanted to even write a short story, I'd go, oh, well, I got an idea for a short story. And then this whole fucking dialogue would start. Short stories are stupid. No one reads short stories. You can't sell a short story. Like, just a, a dialogue. And then I'd be like, yeah, but it's just good just to write it. Well, that's a stupid fucking idea anyway, right? And like three weeks of that kind of fucking pitter-patter. <laughs> you're a steaming piece of shit. No, you're really talented. You know, the, the fucking just the eternal battle of <laughs> existence, right? And so three weeks go by and you don't write your stupid fucking short story. And then, you know, 10 years later, you're like, you know, I should have written that fucking story. <laughs> These things, I now have like, just like a fucking whisper of an idea. And that voice starts and I'm like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> Let me go chuck that in ChatGPT and see if there's anything there. Hey, I got an idea for now. Oh, that's a fantastic idea. How about this? <clears throat> oh. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh, that was better than I thought. Uh, could you make it funnier? Yeah, here. Uh, that's not funny. Oh, could you make it more cynically funny? Oh, sure. Brilliant. Here. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, you know what? Oh, fuck that story. That That's a good idea. And then I, I'll go off and explore. Like, like writer's block. It, it doesn't exist if you just say... If you kind of give in... This, this is what you have to give up. With these tools, I have found that what I've, what I've, what I'm, what I've had to give up is the, the hubris that I need to solve the problem. 
idea. Historically, just because this is how the world worked until this shit came along, you would have an idea, and then it was up to you to fucking do something about it or not. And if you didn't do anything about it, then shut the fuck up. You didn't take action, so that's on you, right? But you had to solve the problem. Oh, I've got an idea for a game about aliens and UFOs and this and that. It could be a card game. It could be this. It could be that. And it's, oh, but then I got to go do research and I got eh, eh, eh. Oh, I got an idea for a card game about UFOs and aliens. Oh, uh, hey, <laughs> I got an idea for a card game and this is kind of the topics. What, what are card game mechanics that might be interesting? Oh, there are six kind of card game mechanics, and there's this one and that one and that one and that one. Oh, I heard of a game called, uh, I don't know, whatever it was. And could that be a good game? Oh, that's a classic version of this, you know, concept number three. Well, like, what are some different, you know, what are the different aliens that people talk about when they're talking about UFOs? Oh, well, there's the grays and the greens and the snake eyes and the bit, 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 bit. Like, it's instant, instant. You go from from vapor of concept to some version of execution in minutes. It's fucking insane. And then you look at something like GPT author and you're like, you just sit there and watch it write a novel. <laughs> and, and, and then you open it up in Apple iBooks and it's got a cover. <laughs> it's got the title and it's the story that you told it to write. Like, what do you do with this? You know, and listen, it's not always about the output, right? It's not just the machine wrote a book, therefore the, you know, the book is good and I'm going to turn it in or I'm going to sell it. I, like, but I think that as, as writers, as creative people, we need to figure out where are we on the spectrum of where we derive our value from our personal sense of worth is it in the output or is it in the process or, or like what's the balance of that is it is it i want to be a published author if i'm a published author then i've made it and i don't give a fuck how i get there i want to be a published author well now you could maybe be a published author really really quickly but if you're like, no, no, for me, it's all about the writing. Like if, 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 you're, if you're like, my worth is about crafting words and, and thinking about the relationship of this to that within the story framework and this and that, for me, it's all about the process, then you're going to hate this shit. And then there's going to be people in the middle that are like, well, there's parts of the writing process, like the blocking and tackling of writing, for me is monotonous as fuck. And rewriting is even worse. But I like being in the ideation phase. Well, with this shit, it can do the blocking and tackling. I can just fucking live in the ideation phase and have it do all the blocking and tackling. Then I can go in and kind of refine some shit. Then I can have it look at that stuff and tell me where I, it's grammatically fucked up and where the story has inconsistencies. And it does it like that. It's just, it, like, we're just in a, like... Everything is going to get redefined. And what's, what's cool about learning this stuff now is we get to redefine it. We get to say, this is how I'm going to be a writer. I'm going to learn this shit. I'm going to be a screenwriter. And rather than saying, I will never use AI, like the Writers Guild's doing right now, I'm going to be a screenwriter. And I'm going to use this shit to knock out you know, 10 times more concepts and I'm going to use this stuff to put together pitch letters. <laughs> I'm going to pitch a shit ton more work. I'm going to, I'm going to pitch 10 times more projects than I've ever done in my life. And then I'm going to use these things to, to block out <clears throat> the frameworks for whatever stories get any interest whatsoever. And I'm going to quickly get them to 80%. And then I'm going to spend the two or three weeks I have to get something to them to actually write the screenplay. But like 80% of it's going to be done. But all the concepts, I'm going to generate 100 concepts. I'm going to take 10 of those and turn those into pitches. I'm going to have this thing write all the letters. 
I'm going to send out all the letters. Anything that gets a nibble, I'm going to come back to these things, write the frameworks for the stories, block out the characters, block out the basic story, and then I'm going to start my writing process. And I don't have to be fucking tortured with, should I take a left at this dramatic decision point or a right at this dramatic decision point? Chat ADD strikes again. That's what this channel is, baby. Buckaroo Banzai. That was a good one. Uh, Twix is a candy bar, Kyle. No, wait. What was the... There was a... There was, wasn't there... Hmm. There was another... Wait, let's see. 90s cereal sounded like Twix. What was it? Tricks. Quacks. Wait, was it quacks? <laughs> wait, wait. Kicks. Wait, was it kicks? Maybe it was kicks. 90 cereal. QIX. That was a game. Was it kicks? Ah, uh, what was it? It had a, it had a, it had an alien. It had a UFO. It had a UFO. Wait, okay, wait. 90 cereal. Uh, Sear EL, um, UFO alien on box. Quisp! Quisp! Ha! Chat ADD. <laughs> Quisp! I, the, the, Quisp was one of those ones, I wanted this to taste better than it did. <laughs> this one tasted like shit. It wasn't sweet enough, and it didn't make the top of your mouth bleed. Um, but I loved the box. I like I, this was one of those ones I kept trying, and then I would I would be disappointed when I actually ate it. <laughs> Twist. I know Twix is a candy bar. Do I look like a guy that doesn't understand what candy bars are, <laughs> and the his, the history of confection and and sugary goodness? <laughs> I know all that shit. <laughs> oh, Quisp, Quisp. <laughs> Kyle, your hacker is private messaging me right now. Yay! Yay, asshole hacker. Sorry about that, Silver Fox. It's fucking awful. You know what he did today? So so I wrote so I I went to his I'm assuming it's a him. But whatever. Asshole either way. <laughs> our 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 scammer um identifies as asshole. Um, I went to their account and it, it looked exactly like, you know, my page and the top three videos were pinned, right? So he, he took my pinned videos and pinned them at the top of his. So today I made a video going, I've got a, I've got a scammer and I, and I, you know, showed my little, you know, this thing, wait, this, wait, where is it? That thing. So that's in my video and I pinned it. So, so now at the top of my, at the top of my channel, like that's the top left video. And so I went back to his this afternoon and he pulled the pinned videos cause he doesn't, he doesn't want it to be comparable to what I've got. So little fucker. So he is, he's actively monitoring. He's probably hanging out in here. <clears throat> if you're in here, you, go fuck yourself. You fucking ass. Oh, it makes me crazy. You know, the thing that makes me the most bitter about it is the amount of time that he spends stealing my shit. He could just be making a fucking channel and make it, get his own audio. Like, it takes you just as much time to be a scammy asshole as it does to, like, start a real business. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Stick around. We're running on funny. <laughs> All right. I didn't know you do meetups in person. That's awesome. We'll be there. Awesome. Yeah. I the uh, the the meetup for the salon are in person in Denver, and then anyone outside of Denver, you can just join on on the Zoom or it's a Google Meet. Um, but but sign up on the meetup, and uh, the information for the the next meeting is this coming Tuesday. And we've got five of our members are going to be talking about projects they're working on. And then we, we talk about, we just, 
we like introduce ourselves and talk about what people are talking about. We talk about some news items. Like there was some some big news. Like I'll definitely be talking about ideogram, and I'll be talking about um, the uh, you know GPT three point five fine tuning. Just there's a bunch of stuff has happened. Uh, but I, Kyle, if you cut class short, we we can all get in a nap. I know. I need to. What time is it? It's nine thirty. I'll, I'll go till like ten, because I got. I was up. I was up really late last night. I did. I think the live last night was three and a half hours. It's like Jesus. It didn't feel like that. Like when you're having fun, you know. Um, I like how you manage the room, but mods can pin comments for you to notice. All right, so we're going to definitely do that. So I, I'm going to reach out. So if you're one of the irregulars and, and you're you're willing to mod, just DM me, and I'll set up like a, a call where we can we can get together and talk about that and how it would work. Because I don't like I don't want it to be a pain in the ass and a burden, but if it can if it can make the the channel a little more smooth and, and less frustrating, I know it gets frustrating because now I'm. I'm now 99 plus messages behind. So all of the new people are like, Kyle, I've been telling you about a problem I have and you haven't answered me. So uh, I don't really get any value out of this. I mean, your little funny jokes are f like they were fun for once. But if you don't answer my question, then I don't know why I'm here. You know? No? Answer me. Oh, this is very frustrating. This is very frustrating. Why are people here? Who who is does what are his qualifications? What are his qualifications? He says AI learning lab. He hasn't talked about AI once. What is this? You know, those people. <laughs> so so if we could make that frustration a little less, that would be good. <laughs> Tobias will moderate for you. Awesome. That's great. Thank you, Tobias. Wait, from the hot tub? You can't moderate from a hot tub, Tobias. That does no, no, no. If if you're gonna moderate, you're gonna moderate. We're we're not doing we're not doing time hot tub time machine, hot tub AI machine. <laughs> All right, you can moderate from the hot tub. Fine, Fonzie will straighten out Chachi. <laughs> oh, are you threatening me, Turtle? 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 Hello, turtle. What's your name? Harsh, harsh weed six, harsh weed three. <laughs> Why three? Because harsh, har, your harsh weed one and two accounts got banned. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, how about image to data entry? Yeah, that's coming. E I G P O C R off t shirts. E I E I I G Y I G. I G I I, <laughs> um, yeah. So so, Bing and Bard right now can see images, right? So if you upload an image to Bard or if you upload an image to Bing, you can say what's in this image. I'm pretty sure one or both of them can OCR the text, but I think they've both got safety guardrails where they're like, we're not gonna. <laughs> We've been told not to OCR text. But but you can OCR see our text, right? So, um, so it's a relatively. You could probably do this in Zapier right now, where you could build an automation to say, "I'm going to upload an image <clears throat> of like a handwritten form. I'm going to OCR it, and and if it's handwritten stuff, I'm going to use whatever library to OCR that. And then I'm going to figure out what fields I need, and I'm going to automatically, you know, dump." the stuff from this image into the appropriate fields. Yeah. I I would think it's it's probably worth you checking um where is it? futurepedia.io There is probably a handful of tools that already do that. Image image to data entry. That that probably exists. I, I would be surprised if it didn't. That that I, like that that feels like one of those things that that you know people using GPT two, GPT three, like all the precursors, you know, um, to before ChatGPT. All that all the technology's been there to be able to do this stuff for a while. So 
that that feels like a use case that probably exists already. I was watching Tech TV the day two two Google execs were announcing their new search engine. They laughed. Interesting. Yeah, Tech TV. Who was that with? What was his name? Not Leo. It was it Leo Laporte on Tech TV. <clears throat> Uh, um, oh, TikTok just jumped me to the bottom. I lost my place in the questions. Oh, this makes me silly. This makes me crazy. This is a minor bug. You know what's a real bug? When someone steals your content and TikTok doesn't give a shit about it. I've, re I've reported that account now like a dozen times. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, honey. Remember that commercial? The nothing, honey commercial? Thank you, Robert. I love me some donuts. Uh, loved my compact black and white laptop. Yep. Remember the Apple luggable laptop that was like an LE, uh, an LCD screen that was like this big? It was like the original Mac screen. It was like this big, but the, the luggable was like this giant suitcase kind of thing. <clears throat> Does not logging off ChatGPT on your mobile phone after using it slow down access for others? Oh, does not logging off ChatGPT on your mobile phone slow down access for others? I don't think it does. I do not think it does. I do not think it does. That's not even English, is it? That's 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 bad words. Some people have a way with words. Other people not have way. One of my favorite Steve Martin jokes of all time. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> and I've got you captive, captive Steve Martin. Some people have a way with words. Some. <laughs> Let's see. So that's it. It's a little bit easy. So I could <laughs> million six. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> which is all facts as soon as you get out of school you forget it all you know because it's just yeah, i don't know where it is let's see um some people Oh, come on. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I don't know where it is. Anyway, that was a good one. Some people have a way with words. Other people will not have way, I guess you'd say. Um, Carol Burnett started a theater company. Oh, that's right. She did. We always have time and money for what's most important to us. Exactly. Why is there a watermelon there? Where? What was that in reference to? Wait, you got it in quotes. Who said that? Why, why is there a watermelon there? Is that a joke? Fuck around? Or we're in the fuck around and find out thing. Kyle Shannon, writer. Kyle Shannon is known for The Lunch Rush 2017. Kyle Shannon, actor, is known for Here by the Ocean 2012. Uh, Zach Zero Pippins, um, the, my acting resume and writing resume that you've got there, um, that's what's called a hallucination. <laughs> those, those do not exist, and I have never been in those. I was in New Jack City, um, I played the friend of a killer in um, America's Most Wanted. I was on a show called American Inventor that was like uh, Shark Tank before Shark Tank. Only lasted one season. Um, trying to think what else. Lots of plays. I got one screenplay option, but nothing was ever made. Pi.ai is essentially an echo chamber if you're not careful. All of these things are, are kind of an echo chamber if you're not careful. Yeah. Pi.ai is, um, I feel like if you're having a humanities conversation with Pi, it's really good. If you're trying to find kind of information about, you know, something going on tonight in town, it's pretty good, but it's a little chatty. And then if you're trying to get anything done with Pi, it's just useless. So yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> 
The internet search I used originally was Dogpile. I remember Dogpile. Thelonious missed your comment. Thelonious until Kyle said it. <laughs> Wait, thank you and Turtle. To heart, love to all our regulars. Uh, Thelonious, <laughs> you, you all are, y'all are funny. Which podcast? I don't know what I was talking about. David Shapiro is very good. Yeah, he is. Um, the marketing AI show. Yes, Vicky, that's correct. Claude censors too much. These all censor too much. If you if you want to, what's your name? Enlightenment Live. Um, if you want these things not to hallucinate, use uh, start playing with the the open source large language models Llama two, and or Co- Code Llama. Apparently, apparently Code Llama just um, surpassed GPT four in a human eval. I don't know what the I didn't pay attention to what task they were giving it, but that's the first time that I know of that any open source model has exceeded GPT four at anything. So that's pretty remarkable. Claude tried to both sides me about class war. That's in- interesting. I made Claude cry. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I can finally write that kid's book. You can absolutely write a kid's book. I'll tell you, these things for kid's book are, books are fucking brilliant. What, what you can do, Evan, is like super personalized books, right? Like take your kid's name, their favorite subjects, their topics, a dream they had, anything, pop it in there and it'll incorporate it all. It's amazing. And you know what could could even be fun, Evan, is if it's about your kid or someone you know, um, work with them and, and like have them give you ideas in real time. Like write the book in real time with them and let them see how it does it. And then go over to Mid Journey or or you know Stable Diffusion or whatever, and and make images for the book. I mean, yeah, you could do all sorts of really fun stuff. Is this you or AI masquerading as someone to promote AI? I could be GPT five, but how will you know? You won't. You're like, but AI isn't this good. It's too quirky. It's quirky. Is it too quirky? Maybe. It's possible. It's possible I'm just a ruse for the industry. The AI Marketing Association said, huh, we need a spokesperson. We need someone to get people really excited about artificial intelligence. Who could it be? Let's see. Someone who looks remotely famous. What if What if we got someone that looked, I don't know, kind of like Rosie O'Donnell, but... Or... Tom Arnold or, or like like fat Alec Baldwin. And then and then we had him not really know anything about AI. He he was completely unqualified. Yeah, that would be good. They wouldn't suspect it. They they'd listen to him. He, he would engender trust. Yes, that's good. That's good. I like it. And that's how Elon Musk hired me. <coughs> All right. I am clearly punchy. I'm a little punch drunk. I'm punch drunk. You know what I mean? I'm a little punch drunk. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing with this chat chat with Tay. This chat chat with Tay. It's one. It's a fancy computer thing. I can't. It's a, I, I, just, I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't know what you people are doing. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know why you're here. I don't either. But you know, you can make money with ChatGPT. Nah, huh? you can. What is the tool? It's called the Easy Button. But it's golden, signifying money, <laughs> a lot of money with ChatGPT. We can do it. We can do it. Mm, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. All right. Are they only ebooks? Are we able to copy them and paste them into Word? Yeah, Nancy, the uh, GPT author, it just generates a big giant pile. Yeah, you can copy and paste it. You can do whatever you want with it. <clears throat> Are you talking about GPT-4 or a plugin for GPT-4? So GP, oh yeah, make it rain. Thank you, Winston. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> so GPT author is not a plugin for chat GPT-4. It's actually just a script that somebody wrote in Python, I think. I think it's in a, it's in a 
uh, Google Colab notebook. So you, you basically just go search for it and then you, you take this notebook file and you run it in Google Colab and you hit play and it just does its thing. You got to put in your um, OpenAI API key and your Stable Diffusion API key. So it's a little geeky to be able to do it, <clears throat> but it's, it's pretty slick. It's not, it's not super complicated. And if you want to get curious about this stuff, there's, you know, one of the things to do is start pushing the boundaries of where you're comfortable being with technology. Like that's my past year and a half has been like getting back into the technical shit because I've been a CEO for a while. And as as a CEO, you just go, oh, I've got people for that. <laughs> just go make, make it happen. <laughs> so I just want it to work, you know, do your technical thing. So I've been doing that for a while. And <laughs> so so then I start looking at this this generative AI shit. And I'm like, Oh my God, I, I, I think, I think this is like the next World Wide web. Holy fucking shit. I need to learn this. And, and then I go in and I'm like, I don't know anything anymore. I don't know how to do this anymore. In fact, one of my, one of my big insights with chat GPT, I was, I was doing some stuff and it, I, I had it generate an email. And then I was like, Oh, I'm going to send the email in SendGrid. And then when I did the test email, it looked like shit because it wasn't formatted. It was just the words. And I'm like, oh, I just got to put it in HTML. And I'm like, I haven't done HTML in like 25 years. I'm like, I don't fucking know what to do anymore. So I said, hey, ChatGPT, can you make this look nice in HTML? And it said, sure. <laughs> and spit it out. And I was like, oh, fuck. This is wholly different. This, like, some, this thing is different than anything we've ever seen before. So, but, but yeah, so I, so if you want to stretch your boundaries a bit, um, go, just go look up GPT author and, and learn how to launch and run a Google collab notebook and go run it. It's pretty cool. Uh, we talking to chatty, chatty bot today. We were discussing quantum physics. Oh yeah. Was not, we, um, got around to the turtles are all the way down paradox. <laughs> Oh, you know what we should do? Whenever, whenever I do an example, now I'll do. I'll make sure all of our examples are turtle related. So that's that's actually really important, I think, for the for the community. Uh, why is Claude not known? He's right there. I don't know. What do you mean by that? Jack Sonny Young, Jack Sun Young, Jackson, Jackson Young, or Jack Sun Young? Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Well, Jackson, or is it Jack? You're sweating. Oh, your swearing is so tacky, buddy. Oh, yeah, I know. I forgot to tell people I swear a lot. That's okay. You don't have to be here. I just, I swear. It's what I do. I don't, you know, <laughs> you can leave. It's, uh, listen, there's, there's so much tacky about me. <laughs> just, just, you should go. You should go. It's like, it's like quasi talented, quasi technical, <laughs> quasi funny, quasi interesting, you know, quasi quaffed. And I cuss. So yeah, I I would imagine I'm a disappointment for you, so that's that's I would definitely not be here. Um she coined a new word, the Horton verse. That's good. She also called me a master of philosophy. Of philosophy and children's literature, that's good. I love this. Thank you, Froden, Froden, Froden. Wait, Fro oh, Frodo, Frododendron, Frododendron. Ten out of ten on the name. Uh, well, no, I'll give you a nine point five. Here's so name ten out of ten. Execution nine point five out of ten. Because with all the lowercase letters, if you just uh capitalize the second D. So Frodo, capital D Dendron, 10 out of 10. That Because it would make it easier to know what it was. Because there's too many syllables in it. Fro, do, Frodod, Frodod. Like you don't know what to say, but if it was Frodo, cap D Dendron, 10 out of 10. Solid. But anyway, glad you're liking this. Because what's his name up here? Who is the one? Glengarry? Not enjoying, not enjoying the lab. 
<laughs> this doesn't seem like any lab I've ever been in. <laughs> Where's the white coat? Uh, and by the way, what is with this swearing? It's a little tacky. <laughs> so, yeah, so. But anyway, Frodo and Indra solid. Oh, and you sent me a heart. Thank you. Mm. Frodo Dendron became number 70, member number 74 on the team. Thank you. That's awesome. Stability AI is really nailing it on image editing features, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, so what Stability AI did that's, that's super cool is that they open source all, all their models. So the developer community, every time they dump something out, the develop, developer community pounces on it. And so there's just all this development. It's amazing that um, Midjourney still has the lead they have, but I don't. I don't think they're going to have it long. They're 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 an eleven person company, and the CEO's a bit of a. He's a, he's he's a bit of a cuckoo. Um, I have a feeling. I have a feeling Google's going to come out swinging, and I think you're right, Rudy. I think Stability AI is going to do something good, and I heard. This might have just been like Twitter rumor bullshit, but I heard that um, OpenAI's got some uh, some image generating thing that's supposedly like mind blowingly good. So we'll see. Because Dolly sucks. So I hope they have something good behind the scenes. Because Dolly is poo poo. Discussing quantum physics with Pi AI. <laughs> I'm going to try that. Quisp. That was it. Robert Rossi. Robert Rossi's a Gen Xer. Oh, Kix was the other one. Yes. Kicks and Quisp. Yes. Yes. Kicks was also disappointing taste wise. Cereal. Kicks. Cereal. Well, let me get the box. I want to see the box. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That was it. All right. I have friends that swear and friends that don't, but all my new friends must swear. <laughs> Winston's in the club. Winston's in the club. Listen, honest to God, in 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 as, as fucking toxic and poisonous as our current society is and our our political discourse is i feel like swearing is the fucking least of our problem how about we all swear and show a little empathy for one another and care for one another and try to support one another like that's what this channel is about not the swearing the swearing is just a byproduct of me being an idiot but how about we like connect as humans and say oh you got an idea here let me help you with that Oh, you want to learn that? Can uh, yeah, let's do that. You want to do something together? <laughs> what if we did that again, rather than? Tom, is there something else I can help with? Yeah, stop listening to me and stop talking to me. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't do that. Siri, I I get so I get so apoplectic that Siri tries to save me. <laughs> Swearing isn't the problem. Lack of empathy is a real fucking issue right now. How about we're less assholes to one another? How about that? Talk about cereal from the 90s. Talk about turtles. Occasionally talk about AI. And be nice to one another. That's what I'm going for. And yeah, I'm going to swear. I don't swear when I'm talking to my pharma clients. Sometimes I do. <laughs> if I get all excited. <clears throat> uh, -pop 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 -pop. Quisp, Uf UFO cer cereal. Yes. Twix is caramel shortbread covered in delicious chocolate. Oh, I know, Nancy. I likes me some, some Twix. Uh, Twix peanut butter mm, is, is, is my jam. By the way... Um, I grew up in, in Pennsylvania, South Central Pennsylvania, and you could always get vanilla ice cream with peanut butter in it without chocolate chips, just vanilla and peanut butter. I'm living in Denver. You can't get it anywhere else in the country. What the fuck is with that? Vanilla ice cream and peanut butter swirl is fucking delicious. 
So whatever conspiracy theories going on from the chocolate cabal that's like you got to put chocolate chips in the vanilla and peanut butter shit, that's just wrong. Just wrong. Yes, that's AI related. Yes, it is AI related. They must swear like the turtles. Never heard of it. Quisp, yes. I had to run to my phone to answer my fave Silver Fox. See? I thought you meant Trix cereal and Twix candy. I well, this is why. So, so now we know why we're so confused. There was Trix, Twix, Kix, and Quisp. <laughs> Those four, they were in a trademark fiesta. <laughs> Loved Quisp. Wow. Um, if you have Kyle Shannon and Pastor, you you've made it to celebrity. <laughs> Oh, good Lord. Uh, I'm not your imposter. Mm, someone, I bet the imposter's in here. I bet the imposter's hanging out. Just enjoys being called a dickhole. Ah. <laughs> uh. He's definitely here. Yeah, I know. He is. I think they try to make money from crypto. Yeah, he's definitely a crypto bro, for sure. He is definitely crypto bro cuz it's it's such a it's such a crypto bro kind of hack, right? Like that's that's how all they scam everyone's money is they'll, you know, they'll copy websites and they'll copy um Hey, we got a big mint coming. You know, come mint here, and then you go mint there, and they drain your fucking wallet. It's 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 a total crypto bro kind of mechanic, right? It you know it, it's one of the fucking drags about blockchain and crypto is that there's so much of that bullshit that like they you know they they are in a well deserved timeout sitting in the fucking corner with you know, low market caps for all that stuff because they're just a bunch of idiots. Not all of them, right? There's some good projects in there. There's some really good projects in there. But like <clears throat> people like, you know, my little my little buddy, AI little, little, little learning lab, <sighs> gives them all a bad name. It's happening with quite a few channels. Yeah, I'm sure. He clearly hasn't got your talent hmm. and, and seen. Hi, my name's Kyle Shannon. Some people think I'm not real. They think I'm an AI. It's possible. What do you think? Talented? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Could he do that? I don't think so. But you know what he's probably doing? He's probably recording these and then he's going to turn them into videos and stick them up as new content on his channel. And then at some point, TikTok's going to tell me I'm the fucking imposter. <laughs> it's probably going to happen. Oh, God. What a pain. Whatever. I missed a three. Yeah, the, the, the class that you slept through, Emilio's wife, was three and a half hours. <laughs> This isn't much of a class tonight. I'm not teaching much. I'm just sort of rambling. Rambling. Love this. Shame it's five in the morning. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is not an exit. By the way, 9.5 out of 10 on the name. I like it. This is not an exit. Solid. Uh, Joker, I'm a mod. I will DM. Awesome. That's great, Joker. Um, this role play is why I joined. Oh, is this role play? Is it, am I doing cosplay? I, I need a costume if I'm going to do cosplay. Do I have anything here I can cosplay with? I could do like, <laughs> you know, like a little little redneck down in the bayou. Well, although this is Colorado, Colorado whiskey. Isn't that a cool bottle? And look, I got a baby one too. A little baby. A little baby. And they're still sealed. Are they? Yeah. They're from like the 60s. Evan, what are your qualifications? Tell me, uh, Mr. Shannon, good day, sir. Um, uh, by, by chance, would you be uh, so kind as to share your qualifications? My qualifications for what? Yeah, for 
what you do here for the uh, the the lab, for for, for example. As, you know, as as a researcher, I, I assume I'm, I'm not a researcher, but, but but it's called the lab, right? So so you what, what exactly are your qualifications? I, I, I'm very curious. I, you seem to be an enigma to me. <laughs> I just uh, trying to figure out um. Why I spend time here? It's just it's, would like to know if uh, if this is going to be worth my time at at, at any point. And uh, go, go on. No, sir, sir. Uh, I, I would love to hear. Well, I'm I'm just a guy. <laughs> That's, it's very clever. It's very clever. Very. I just was curious. You know, as as a as a member of the lab, I you know perhaps I could speak to management, uh, understand really more about what the lab's about, what the what what what, what you've accomplished, uh, the papers you've published, perhaps, would be fantastic. All right, and theme and theme. Could the scammer do that? Oh no, no, no. Scammer's probably a dweeb nut that can't make eye contact. Qualified professor. Exactly, Nancy. Very qualified. And I'm a professor of... I'll, I'll have ChatGPT make me a certificate at some point. It's going to be solid. Who is Sam? Thelonious, the bear. Um, those are swell people that hang out. They're, they're irregulars. <laughs> Thanks for the info and the book writing stuff. It was very helpful. And I will be going to sleep. So good night. Good night, Cyber Zero. You're probably way gone. I'm 99 questions behind there's 93 people in here so there's like i don't know a lot of people who don't know what this is and why i'm acting like this uh my name is kyle shannon this is the ai learning lab uh, i am not qualified uh it is not a lab it is a home office um and uh we like to have fun here we like to talk ai if you have questions about ai pop in the comments below i get very far behind which i am right now and what time is it it's 10 5 i'm gonna go you know what i'm gonna do I'm going to jump to the bottom because I'm so far behind. I can't make eye contact. It's called autism. Oh, I know. In our family, we call it touch of the tism. <laughs> We've got, Zachy's got a touch of the tism. Uh, I think we're four, I think we're four for four ADHDers in the family. Got a, got at least one touch of the tism in the family. And, uh, you know, just, we're, you know, neuro spicy. We're neuro spicies. I think I think that's part of the irregular. It's part of the charm. Part of the charm here is, you know, that stuff. All right. So I jumped to the bottom and I am going to just go back a little bit, answer a few more questions, and then we're going to get on out of here. Wax your nostril hairs, yo. Oh, man. I knew someone was going to talk about my nostril hairs, yo. All right, Anand Nair. Jeez. Man, way to bring a party down. Fine. Wax your nostril hairs. Get a life. Um, something start frosting. Wait, something start frosting the live on my side. I'm alone. I don't know what frosting the live means. You mean it's like freezing? Oh, freezing. It's probably freezing. I'm sorry. I'm afraid. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Sorry. A non there. Sorry. Sorry for <laughs> just just make an offensive statement to someone and they're like, oh sorry man. I didn't mean it. Yeah, whatever. I was just dicking around. <clears throat> Listen, I'm 58. Of course I'm gonna have hairs growing out of fucking everywhere. I, I deal with them occasionally and then they grow again. Cause I'm you just just shit happens. You hit a certain age and just fucking hairs are everywhere. What are you gonna do? What AI platform could I use to speak to prospects via text, not speech? Um, I would go to futurepedia.io. I'm sure there's a lot of projects that are, are doing SMS kind of uh, things. You can also roll your own if you're technical. Um, I would go to futurepedia.io and just search for SMS and see see if there's any. I, I'm sure there's there's things in. in uh, I, I'm sure there's 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 got to be dozens of companies that are doing uh, text chat bots because there were there were hundreds of companies that were doing text like SMS chat bots before, and so now that we've got GPT sitting behind it, um, thanks, Stevo. Now that we've got GPT sitting behind it. Um, 
there, there's going to be all sorts of uh, all sorts of companies doing that. Yes, the images, not the comments. But up, 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 Captain Crunch rules. Yes, less assholes, please, and thank you. More empathy for everyone. Yes, JRC. Yes, Kyle's being mean to Siri. Siri interrupted me. <laughs> Siri tried to mansplain to me. I'm the one that does the mansplaining. I'm the one that does the mansplaining. Not Siri. Not Siri. She can't tell me what to do. No, Culver's in Colorado. Oh, cool. Peanut butter is the jam, he said. <laughs> oh, I did. That was good. That was comedy. Accidental comedy is the best, isn't it? Can the scammer attack another account after you banned it? Can the scammer attack another account after you banned it? Well, I don't know that the scammer can attack an it. I don't think the scammer is attacking accounts. I think what the scammer is doing is looking like me, having people follow it, so he gains credibility, and then he's having personal conversations and gaining people's trust. This is social engineering is what he's doing. He's saying, hey, I want to help you out, man. And someone's like, oh, Kyle reached out to me. That's really cool. He's like, I want to help you out. And then, hey, you know what I could do? Fuck you and take your money. It's like, God damn it. <sighs> cookie crisp. Oh my God, I loved cookie crisp. So it's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, just jam on bread. I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Still love peanut butter. And it's Jif, by the way, not Skippy. You Skippy weirdos, you're probably the PC people. Here's, here's the thing. Jif people are probably Apple people. Skippy people are PC people. It, uh, if you're a Skippy person, I'm sorry for your loss. It's just not as good. It's not. I don't know. I don't know what makes you think it's anywhere in the neighborhood of Jif, but you're wrong. It's at least you know you're wrong, right? All right. Among Us is a nice imposter hunting game. Oh, yeah, and there's one of the NFT projects that I'm in, um, one of the founders of it has got a game that's that's uh, a knockoff of Among Us. That's pretty cool. Text back AI, AI assist, Mira, reach.ai, Thelonious helping, helping some others out. That's super cool. Can you get more than one scammer on the same account? Can you get one? Well, sure. So right now he's he's created... He's created... AI la la learning lab, right? Where there's two L's in front of learning. He could put two L's in front of lab. He could do AII learning lab. Like there's so many combinations of this. He could do A1 learning lab, AI1 instead of the L learning lab. He, there's all sorts of shit he could do. So, yeah, unfortunately, I don't... I, I, Unless we can somehow, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he'll get bored. Maybe he'll realize that I'm just an idiot and I don't know. I don't know why I was targeted. I don't know why. They I, they, they got what, some criteria. It, it could just be a math thing, you know. I hit a certain amount of followers and it could just be a math thing. Above a certain amount of followers. He's probably got scripts that just every time I post something, it scrapes my site, dumps it to his site. So, you know, there's a spy at the airport. Your job, find him. Exactly. I think I'm chatting with Kyle Shannon Avatar, chat GPT-5. Exactly. That hair cannot be AI generated. Exactly. You can't. There's too many directions. This is this is the sure giveaway that this is human. Kyle Headroom. Um, okay, I'm leaving. Wait, uh, Dr. J, the TRS-80. I'm not sure if it had the dual floppy disk or not. I know it was heavy. My TRS 80s in my seventh grade math class had dual floppies. Dual floppies. System on one, data on the other. We were baller, man. None of that cassette bullshit. Linear media. Linear media for random access computers never made any sense to me. You needed the floppy, man. Floppy was where it was at. The young people were like, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> All right, listen, um, this has been fantastic. Well, it's been fun. Listen, I, I was a little tired tonight. I know I didn't talk a lot about AI, and, and I, got, I got a little rammy with the people talking about my nose hair. Uh, but, you know, 
Um, my first was a TRS-80. It ate my dissertation. Ooh, that sucks. <laughs> but good night, everybody. Night, Tobias, Thelonious, Dr. J, Joker, Share Bear, Firefly, Melio's wife, Winston, Steve-O. Peace out, dude. Night, Share Bear. Night, Luna Shtick. Nancy. All right, everybody. It's a romper room. Just calling everyone. I, I see JRC and OZM. I see Emilio's wife. I see Vicky. <laughs> M8028. Peace out, everybody. Good night, Tugas. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, it's five in the morning. This is not an exit. This is the exit. Peace out.